On October 28th at 11.20 p.m., the quiet hum of military servers deep within China's defense research complex suddenly turned chaotic. Screens flickered and systems froze as the vast network connecting China's $7.8 billion drone warfare initiative began to collapse. What was once considered Beijing's crown jewel in next-generation warfare, an advanced AI-driven drone program, was now under digital siege. Within minutes, control signals to hundreds of unmanned systems were severed, their communication channels hijacked, and their command nodes rendered useless. For months, Chinese state media had boasted that this drone program represented a new era of strategic superiority. The network integrated high-altitude surveillance drones, combat UAVs, and experimental autonomous strike systems designed to rival Western and Russian technologies. With this program, China aimed to dominate aerial intelligence and unmanned warfare. But as the hack unfolded, it became clear that the system's very complexity, its greatest strength, was also its downfall. The breach, according to preliminary assessments, was not the work of a random cyber group. Evidence pointed toward a coordinated Ukrainian cyber warfare unit, operating with precision, patience, and a level of technical mastery rarely seen. Over the past year, Ukraine has significantly expanded its cyber operations, blending traditional military strategy with advanced digital warfare. While global attention often focuses on artillery battles and territorial advances, Ukraine's cyber defense teams have quietly evolved into one of the most adaptive and effective forces in the world. Supported by European cyber partnerships, private sector experts, and a growing base of domestic talent, Ukrainian cyber divisions have turned the digital realm into a powerful extension of their battlefield reach. By 11.45 p.m., internal systems within China's defense infrastructure were in full lockdown. The National Cybersecurity Emergency Response Center issued an immediate directive to isolate compromised networks. Damage was already spreading. Several control stations for the drone fleet, located across three provinces, had lost contact entirely. According to insider reports later leaked to international media, operators attempting to reboot found their systems looping through false recovery prompts. The malware appeared to have been designed to mimic standard diagnostic procedures, disguising its true purpose until the network's critical systems were already overwritten. What made this attack particularly devastating was its surgical precision. The hackers did not simply crash servers. Instead, they infiltrated the operational framework, embedding code that disrupted drone navigation algorithms and corrupted flight pattern data. Within an hour, dozens of test drones malfunctioned mid-flight. Some crashed into test zones, while others vanished entirely off radar. By the time Beijing's technicians realized what had happened, the network powering China's flagship drone initiative was irreparably compromised. At 12.10 a.m., Chinese military communications began scrambling to contain the situation. Satellite uplinks were redirected, and emergency backup servers were activated. Yet, the response was fragmented. The attack had targeted not just the operational systems, but also the redundancy protocols themselves. In effect, every safeguard the program had was weaponized against it. This incident exposed a critical vulnerability the over-reliance on interconnected systems. China's drone program was built on the premise of integration, shared data streams, and central command analytics. But integration also creates a single point of failure, and Ukraine's cyber strategists appeared to have found it. Sources close to Western intelligence later indicated that Ukraine's divisions may have spent months mapping China's network architecture, using intercepted data, and open source reconnaissance to identify weaknesses in the AI command interface. The broader implications reverberated well beyond Beijing's laboratories. China's drone program had significant export ambitions, with allies like Iran, Owaken, Myanmar, and segments of Russia's defense industry slated to receive derivative versions. The hack not only crippled domestic capabilities, but also jeopardized billions in pending export contracts. By 12.30 a.m., news of the disruption began to circulate through encrypted defense channels. Analysts in Europe and the United States detected unusual spikes in data traffic from Chinese defense networks. Despite Beijing's initial attempts to downplay the incident, satellite imagery of grounded drones and sudden blackouts around key 
military zones hinted at the scale of the damage. The timing was significant. The hack came after failed attempts by pro-Russian and Chinese-linked groups to infiltrate Ukrainian defense systems. In striking back, Kiev's cyber units demonstrated both resilience and strategic depth. It was a critical psychological victory. China had been positioning itself as a rising player supplying Russia with key technologies, including navigation components. By disrupting this partnership, Ukraine effectively destabilized one of Moscow's valuable support channels. As the first hours unfolded, China faced an uncomfortable reality. Its most advanced technologies were not safe. The notion of invulnerability was shattered. Engineers were forced to physically disconnect servers and halt all ongoing tests. By 12.40 a.m., the once promising program stood silent. As Beijing's top cybersecurity officials convened in an emergency briefing, the full scale of the breach came into focus. What initially seemed like an isolated malfunction was confirmed as a coordinated assault. Screens displayed cascading error logs and corrupted drone flight data. Meanwhile, inside a cyber operations unit in Kyiv, a quiet sense of satisfaction settled over the team. Their mission was to neutralize a threat, as intelligence suggested China's program was being used to transfer advanced targeting algorithms to Russia. By severing the connection at its source, Ukraine had disrupted a strategic supply chain influencing the war's dynamics. At 12.55 a.m., Beijing's state-controlled media issued a vague statement about temporary network instability. It fooled few. Global intelligence agencies already had intercepted digital traces linking the breach to Ukrainian IP structures. The fingerprints were subtle. A signature embedded deep within the malware's code that analysts described as a digital watermark of accountability. This incident reignited a debate. Could China's technological expansion sustain itself under constant cyber threat? Inside the affected research base in Shanxi province, technicians struggled to isolate the malicious code. The malware was adaptive, evolving with every attempt to neutralize it. According to later disclosures, the attack employed a multi-layered approach. It began with a decoy intrusion, targeting the drone production supply chain, embedding seemingly harmless diagnostic tools into software updates. These updates were approved and installed, silently granting the attackers access. Once inside, the malware remained dormant for weeks, studying internal communication patterns, mapping command hierarchies, and learning administrative passwords. Then, precisely when the network's activity peaked during a live drone test, the malware activated. The result was catastrophic synchronization failure. Drones lost navigational stability, crashing or spiraling uncontrollably. At 1.15 a.m., the Chinese Ministry of Defense ordered a complete lockdown of all drone-related facilities nationwide. Access was suspended and data drives were confiscated, but containment proved elusive. The malware's propagation algorithm was engineered to exploit human behavior, duplicating itself into hidden subdirectories every time an operator attempted to quarantine a file. Across Asia, the ripple effects were immediate. Partner nations negotiating drone imports, including Myanmar and Pakistan, abruptly suspended talks. The revelation that China's defense infrastructure could be so easily compromised raised questions about the reliability of any shared technology. For Ukraine, the operation signaled that superiority in modern warfare was not just about controlling territory, but about mastering the unseen battlefield of data. At 1.25 a.m., intercepted communication logs revealed that portions of China's China's drone AI database had been erased entirely. The algorithms governing target recognition, terrain mapping, and autonomous decision-making were irrecoverable. Experts estimated restoration could take years and cost billions. Even worse, fragments of classified code began surfacing on encrypted platforms, providing experts worldwide with a glimpse into China's military architecture and its vulnerabilities. The incident also raised questions about Beijing's broader role, as civilian drone exports to Russia were widely believed to be repurposed for military reconnaissance over Ukraine. At 1.40 a.m., an internal audit team from China's National Defense University delivered an unsettling conclusion. The entire drone program would need to be rebuilt from the ground up. The malware had corrupted not only data, but also confidence. Trust within the defense ecosystem was fractured. Western observers, meanwhile, noted the sophistication and restraint of the attack. The hackers had targeted systems with surgical precision, avoiding civilian infrastructure and focusing exclusively on military assets. 
demonstrating strategic maturity. At 1.55 a.m., Beijing attempted to reboot a portion of the command system using isolated servers. The attempt failed. The corrupted code reactivated, triggering a new wave of system collapses. For all practical purposes, China's drone program was now non-functional. At 2 a.m., the atmosphere inside China's Central Defense Command was one of disbelief. The nation's most advanced technological project had collapsed. This was not just a cyber attack, it was a strategic humiliation. It exposed how deeply interconnected and therefore vulnerable the country's defense ambitions had become. Years of investment in automation and AI had inadvertently created a digital Achilles heel. At 2.10 a.m., emergency communications began between Beijing and allied governments. Nations like Iran, Belarus, and Pakistan demanded clarity. The breach sent shockwaves through their own defense circles. In Tehran, reports indicated engineers immediately disconnected military AI systems, fearing the same vulnerabilities. Analysts from NATO began publishing assessments outlining how the structure of China's military networks, designed for speed, made them susceptible to infiltration. By 2.25 a.m., the Chinese Ministry of State Security initiated Operation Firewall Reset, an emergency containment effort involving the shutdown of all major defense-linked data exchanges. Yet the drastic measure only deepened the crisis, halting logistics for other military operations, from satellite tests to naval coordination. Reports continued to filter in from drone testing fields, describing fields littered with damaged UAVs. At 2.35 a.m., high-ranking officials convened for an emergency session of the Central Military Commission. The mood was somber. Scientists presented grim findings. The malware had penetrated the autonomous control architecture, rendering most AI-driven flight systems unrecoverable. One general reportedly called it the single greatest digital failure in the history of the People's Liberation Army. As word spread, neighboring nations like Japan, South Korea, and India quietly accelerated their own defensive cyber programs. At 2.45 a.m., Chinese intelligence agencies began a counter-investigation, suspecting that Ukraine had not acted alone and that Western partners may have provided support. While Kyiv remained silent, the precision of the strike left little doubt that its cyber force operated at a sophisticated level. At 2.55 a.m., international reactions flooded in. Western media described the hack as a digital turning point. Markets reacted swiftly, with shares of Chinese defense firms dipping. In Moscow, the reaction was one of alarm. Russia's military had relied on Chinese technology to offset drone shortages. The failure of Beijing's program sent shockwaves through the Kremlin. Intelligence suggested Moscow urgently reached out to Tehran for replacement equipment, underscoring how the network of alliances was beginning to fracture. As dawn approached in Beijing, the confident tone of state media had vanished. By 3.05 a.m., an official government statement finally acknowledged serious disruptions due to foreign interference. While it avoided naming Ukraine, the implication was unmistakable. It marked the first time China publicly admitted to being on the receiving end of a successful cyber assault targeting its military infrastructure. At 3.10 a.m., the final phase of the crisis came to a quiet close. The command center's lights dimmed. The $7.8 billion drone program was effectively in ruins. Years of progress erased in a single night. As the first light crept across the horizon, two worlds stood in contrast. In Beijing, silence and introspection. In Kyiv, quiet confidence. The balance of technological power had shifted, not through brute force, but through code. Today, the fallout from this digital strike continues. It serves as a potent reminder that in modern warfare, a nation's strength is not just in its hardware, but in its code. Even the most powerful systems remain vulnerable to a precisely targeted attack. 